hello and welcome so today what we'll be doing is we're going to be installing Arch Linux inside of a virtual machine so let's go through the process as you can see on the screen here we have Proxmox which is my hypervisor or my virtual machine manager and we have a bunch of virtual machines present in the list here but we're going to start off with creating one so here we are here creating a virtual machine uh, I like to uh, give it the name of um, the distribution of Linux. So, so for this instance, we're using Arch Linux. So Arch Linux is the distribution. And then followed by that, we have the purpose. So um, I've made a bunch of different servers in the past, like a WS Workstation node for um, other things. Uh, I think that was for Ansible, actually, and Virtual Machine, Kali Virtual Machine. So, I mean... For this instance, we're just going to call it main because we're going to be doing a, a bunch of things with this. So step one, we didn't, we've named the virtual machine. We, um, we're calling it Arch main. Okay. Um, you're going to need to install the Arch Linux ISO. This can be acquired via the uh, website Arch Linux download. So there should be a ISO available. So you can either torrent, which helps everyone out. It saves um, on bandwidth and other things, I would assume. Um, which is the main purpose of torrenting, of course, to download Linux ISOs, of course. <laughs> or you can um, download from the servers here, whichever helps, I guess. And once you've done that, you just need to um, proceed. So this is the ISO, I've got it. It comes out every first of the month, so April 1st. April Fools, um, okay, and everything else looks okay. We're gonna change the BIOS from default, which is C BIOS or just normal BIOS, to UEFI. So make sure you do that. Add your um, EFI storage, and I like to untick pre-enroll keys. Now we go to disks. So this is going to be how much storage is located on your virtual machine. I like to dedicate about 50 gigabytes because we are going to do a couple things with this virtual machine. We're going to go through the installation and then afterwards we're going to go through the configuration. So step by step, um, 50 gigabytes looks fine to me. Moving onwards, we have the CPU. So how many um, cores we're going to dedicate to this virtual machine? I'm going to give this six cores for this instance and I think we're okay otherwise. Let's proceed onward, uh, next. And then I'm gonna give this about eight gigabytes of storage, of, of um, sorry, eight gigabytes of RAM so that it can do processing there as well. Um, let's see, so 8,096 should be fine. And I like to turn off balloon device so it's static. There we are, not dynamic. Um, and we're not gonna section anything off, so we're not going to turn on any virtual LAN or uh, VLANs or anything. We're just going to leave it as it is. And we're going to start off to creation, finish. We should be seeing it in a moment here. Okay, so this is our instance. Okay, and with that, We should be good to go in a moment. <clears throat> uh, please take note, you will likely need to use another resource by the name of the Arch Linux Installation Guide. I do look upon this while I go through this process usually. And this gives us all the information we need. Um, if you wanna verify your, your ISO is legit, feel free to go through this process. I'm gonna skip through that today. This is all fine for me. We're definitely using EFI, but it's safe to check. Let's let's give it a check. So here we are here. We're going to do LS sys firmware, EFI, EFI vars, and everything's here. So we're good there. Now I have to check if we have an internet connection. So let's just ping archlinux.org. We have the external 
IP address right there and we have responses. So we're all good there as well. Okay. Um, next, we're going to be partitioning the disks. So typically you'll find with Windows or other Linux distributions, they do this all for you. It's not as hands-on. So um, there's an option here to use FDisk, which is strictly terminal. It's not very visual, I guess. Um, but if you compare it to CFDisk, which looks like so, uh, it's much more handsy. You know, you get, to, you get to see things better. So I like to use this instead. And if you're dealing with multiple drives, you're going to want to be very specific on which drive you're, um, you're, you're messing with here, you're partitioning. So I like to LSBLK. We have three different uh, drives present, but um, these are just the um, ISO or whatever, whatever this is, um, the, the live environment. But we're going to um, stick with what we know. We, we set up a 50 gigabyte disk earlier right here if you're familiar and uh, this is located on SDA but what you don't know is that um, SDA has a little thing in the front it's um dev SDA so make note of that we're going to be um, using that so uh, CF disk very particular slash dev slash SDA that is how you get this in particular um, okay Oh, uh, also to make note as well, um, when you LSBLK, you are, if you're doing this on a desktop or if you're doing this on a laptop, you will notice something slightly different. Let me be particular here as well. Um, we have uh, this terminal here. So uh, LSBLK. And if you see, we have multiple drives present, but um, right here, these are M.2 drives, so NVMe 0 and 1 and uh, NVMe 1 and 1. I have two, um, I have two M.2 drives in, present in my machine, uh, so that's what you'll see. Um, M.2s are these in particular, right there, and they look like so. This is one inside of a um, inside of a desktop motherboard. And this is one inside of a laptop. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, they are the new, the new thing. Um, but if you do have a SSD or if you have a hard drive, um, you will notice that they'll just be SDA, SDB typically. So, just just something to take note of. Okay, moving back to the virtual machine and the installation guide. We're going to start partitioning. So dev SDA. Now there is a formula you have to. There's a formula you have to follow. Um, oh, and I think you might have missed that. But uh, here you're given the option to choose multiple different label types. Um, we're going to stick with GPT here. If you do, if you're doing BIOS, uh, which I think limits you to like four gigabytes because it's x86 from memory. I think um, you're going to want to. Um, to stick with MBR, but not here. We're fine here. So let's uh, go with GPT. And so you need to create a mount boot partition. So 300 megabytes. If you're doing multiple kernels, that means if you're also running the Windows kernel, I think it's Windows NT, um, you're going to want to extend that to one gigabyte. So that's something you want, you'll want to do there. Um, but we're giving it 300 megs, so 300 megabytes. Okay, that's uh, the number one partition. Now, the second one is the swap. It's typically best to dedicate the same amount of RAM or double. Um, what the swap is in particular is, it's essentially um, when your RAM is being fully utilized 100%, um, you have no more RAM to spare. Um, then you dig into your swap, your swap partition here, your your uh, your swap basically, and um, then that gets used. It's basically a slower version of RAM, but it it saves your computer from, I think, kernel panicking. So your ba your computer basically eats its, it eats itself, and you don't want that to happen. So that's why they have a swap here, and why I use a swap as well. So yeah, okay. And next we have uh, 
the mount directory or mount partition and that's the remainder of your device so that's all we need all she wrote and now we just need to select the partition type how i do this typically is by doing the following so uh, if i and use the arrow keys to select type go to the very top efi system not the exact same as efi system partition but close enough so if I system, that's mount boot done. Now we need to go down to the swap partition or the swap directory. Uh, swap, yeah, swap, swap partition. Anyway, um, let's just uh, make that Linux swap. So that's just one up from file system. And here we are here. And then finally, we'll make the, uh, the root partition or the mount, I guess. Um, everything else, and that is this one down here, x86 hyphen 64 there we go there and now we write we type yes and enter once you've done that you get the partition table has been altered you're good to go quit out of it and now we have to format the drives okay so down here we can begin the format so let's start with how it is in, in the process here so make file system ext4 we're going to do this for the root partition which is this one here oh um and to be clear lsblk we have the root partition which is the remainder of the device <clears throat> this is 41 gigs that's definitely the one the others are the swap and the mount boot partition so or the efi system partition all right, um, so let's proceed with that. Uh, mkfs.ext4 uh, forward slash uh, dev slash sda3. There we go there. Should be quick. There we go. Done. Now let's do the swap, which is uh, make swap dev sda2. Right here, 8 gigabytes. We dedicated. And then finally, uh, we have the uh, mount boot partition. So make file system vfat, I like to use. You can use uh, this one over here, which is called just fat. Um, but I just prefer vfat um, preference, really. No real difference from my understanding. Um, and this should be that. So they're all formatted we're good to go there and then we just need to mount so mount uh, dev and then we go with root so this is going to be uh, it is sda3 to mount so again make sure you lsb okay make sure you know where you are because this is a big step here and follow the process exactly because if you don't, um, you're not going to have a bootable system afterwards. So uh, next we're going to um, mount the EFI system partition. So how you do that is um, if you ls slash mount, if you look up everything inside of it, you can see that um, mount only has lost and found inside of it. What you need to do is you need to um, mount uh, SDA2 to... Oh, sorry, SDA1 to the um, boot, the mount boot uh, directory. And how you do that is you need to create it because it doesn't exist here yet. So how I do this is make dir, make directory, and I do dev, uh, and then it, oh, sorry, mount, and then it's uh, boot. So make directory, mount boot, and then we ls mount, boot is now present. And with this, you can just mount dev sda1 to mount boot, like so. And finally, we just need to turn the swap on. Swap on dev sda2. And that's all of it tied together. So uh, let's lsblk again. We'll clear everything out. And then we'll lsblk, list of block devices. And we have the mount partition right here, or the root. Then we have the swap right here as well. Um, and we have the mount boot. So compare that to your little uh, list here in the 
in the uh, installation guide and it should look basically the same if you're doing it on virtual machine. Otherwise, it's going to look slightly different, but other than that, you should be fine, okay? So now, uh, let's proceed. Uh, so we need to do pack strap. Feel free to um, edit your mirror list so that it's in your location. I think that's mainly what you do here, but I'm gonna skip that step and do pack strap hyphen K slash mount base Linux Linux firmware. This installs all the um the base Linux stuff that we require and press enter. This might take a little bit of time, but should be okay. And while we're here, I might as well um why should you install Arch Linux? Arch Linux is a customizable, very hands-on sort of uh, distribution of Linux and it's fun. So I think these are the main reasons why you should install Linux, but uh, it's not for everyone, but it's, it's, it's good, I think, personally. So, yeah. And it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, by the way, what you're gonna be missing once you install all this is you're gonna be missing the man pages. So you're gonna be missing the, um, the manual so if you want to if you want to look up commands and what they do, man so and so command, um, you're you're going to run into some issues. So you're going to need to install that. Uh, you, you're not going to have a text editor. Not even Nano exists here. So you're going to need to install uh, Vim or Nano. Um, I prefer Vim personally. So I'm going to be installing that. And you're not going to have any network managers or um, DHC PCD at all. So I like to install those as well. Uh, we're going to go install that in a moment, actually. So when we're in the actual uh, root of our new install, um, <clears throat> which is a couple steps away. Okay. <clears throat> Nearly there. Next, we're going to generate a file system table fs tab and once we generate that uh, we should be good to go into root of our new system I guess uh, let's see and with this the image is created and come on you can do it I believe in you. <laughs> Image created successfully, great. Okay, um, about two minutes, 30 seconds later. I think we're pretty much done. Now, um, what we need to do now is I'm gonna clear this so we can see better and we're going to generate a file system table like so, slash mount, blah, 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 mount ex etc fs table fs stab f, f stab yeah let's f stab sounds cool um <laughs> and then we do that and then we go into the root of that oh actually we should also check the resulting file so how i do this is i cat and then mount etc f stab and from here you can see <coughs> your Partitions. So we have SDA3, which was our uh, mount or root uh, partition. It's all here. That's good. And um, we have SDA1, which is our boot partition or EF, EFI system partition, I think they call it as well. Um, so that's right here as well. And finally, we have the swap. So if these are all present, you're basically all good to go. <clears throat> okay, let's proceed. And we're going to go into the root directory now. So change to the root of the mount and with this we're in so that's successful and let's proceed let's go to the next step so we have to set the time zone lnsf slash user share zone info slash australia and then sydney and etc locale time local time and with this that's that done and next we have to set up the hardware clock 
HW clock and Systo HC. That's done as well. Now we're going to set up localization. Um, so, oh, we don't have Vim installed, do we? Pacman hyphen S. This is where we start with the uh, the big installs. So, man for manual, so we can look up our commands. Um, next, we're going to install a text editor, Vim. I like Vim. Vim's good. And then we install network manager as well as DHC PCD in case something bad happens. I like to have two of them. And installation goes through. Nearly there. Okay. We're going to be editing the file here, etc slash locale.gen. Okay. So vim etc slash locale.gen. Good to go. And I like to use vim search function, but you can take it the long way by using the arrow keys if you want. But um, slash locale. Oh, locale. Oh, actually, it's it's slash en underscore us. There we go. And we uncomment. So we remove the hashtag there, the hash, and we save it. So how to save in Vim is you need to, uh, once you actually use a delete key, I think you just press escape and then you need to um, press shift colon uh, W to save, Q to quit. So save and quit, done. I'm going to clear that out of the way. And next we're going to run the command here, locale hyphen gen. So let's go with that, locale hyphen gen. And we're loading that up. That's done. And I'm going to run this as well. Vim etc. So vim slash etc slash locale dot. I think that was conf. That was conf. Okay. And then we need to type this in en underscore us dot utf hyphen eight. Successful. Great. Okay. Now with that, I... I skip this usually, so feel free to do this if you'd like to, but um, we're going to go to the host name now. So vim etc slash host name, and we, we're going to call it the virtual machine's name. So arch distribution and purpose main virtual machine for now. So arch main, that's done. And we also have to do the hosts file. So you need to complete your network configuration. How you do this is like so. There's a hosts file. So slash etc slash hosts. It's down here. What I do here is I look for a particular thing. Here it is. So <clears throat> let's do that. So slash etc hosts. Vim slash etc slash hosts. And then I like to go down the list here. 127.0.0.1. This is going to be localhost. Then colon colon one, localhost again. And then finally we have 127.0.1.1. And this is arch, which is your host name. Oh, your um your purpose. Oh sorry. This is your uh distribution. And finally we have the purpose, which was main, and then local domain, and then tab, and then I do arch main again. And this is what it should look like. Save quit and clear that's that and we're good there so we don't need to proceed any further with that because that's pretty much done uh next we need to run this command which is init ram fs okay so mk init mk init cpio hyphen p hyphen capital p sorry and with this, that's the image. And we're just going to be changing the root password afterwards. So to be clear, you probably shouldn't be using root. So in the next episode, we're going to be also um, creating a different user. So that's configuration. Uh, okay, cool. So that's done. Now we're going to run the command pass wd. 
changing the root password. I like to name it something I'm familiar with, but feel free to change it to whatever you prefer. Just make sure it's secure, of course. Um, okay, so with that, we can proceed with the bootloader. So bootloader, let's go here. We're going to be installing Grub because that's that's the big one that handles everything. It's most popular as well. So what you're going to need to install is first install these packages, Grub and EFI Boot Manager. So let's start with that. Uh, Pacman hyphen S, uh, Grub and EFI Boot Manager. But I also like to do another thing. Let's go back to the installation guide. We have if you have an Intel or AMD CPU, enable microcode. So how you do this is you select the microcode here and then we go to the page and we need to install uh, one of these. So if you're running an AMD CPU, you need to install AMD U-code. If you're running an Intel CPU, it is Intel hyphen U-code. Um, yeah, so AMD hyphen U-code for AMD or Intel hyphen U-code for Intel, okay? Uh, this is, I believe, just for um, efficiency mainly, um, but I like to do it anyway. So, installing all those three. And with that, you should be good to, to go. Okay, so that's done. Um, now, we're going to uh, get out of that page. We don't need microcode anymore. That's fine. We do need grub, so... Next for Grub is we're going to go through the installation and configuration. So for Grub, you need to run this command here. So this is for EFI. If you're um, doing it through BIOS, there's this command here. But typically, you're going to want to do this through Grub. So yeah, uh, through um, EFI, <laughs> sorry. Um, grub hyphen install hyphen hyphen uh, target equals x86 underscore, oh, yeah, underscore 64 hyphen EFI hyphen hyphen EFI hyphen directory. <laughs> A lot of hyphens today. Equals, this is going to be your boot directory. So it's going to be hi, uh, slash boot. It says ESP here, but that's just uh, a placeholder. So disregard ESP, make it slash boot, okay? Great. Hyphen hyphen bootloader hyphen id equals grub and with that that's the command exactly and we're good to go so they should say no error reported uh installation successful and after that's done what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create the config file okay if you don't do this you're going to have issues so please make note uh this one right here so uh, wait a second. Okay, yep. So that's the one. Generate configuration. So make config for grub. Okay, so grub hyphen make config uh, hyphen o uh, slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. And with that, that's done. Everything's been added. We're all solid. Uh, and with this, you can proceed down further. If you want to do any more edits, like um, if you want to detect other operating systems like Windows or anything else, I think you can also make it detect uh, Linux kernel stuff, uh, other Linux uh, distributions in particular. But I'm just going to skip that step because we don't need to go through that right now. And here we have just, we just need to reboot. So you can type in exit or press control D, basically do the same thing. So... Control D, and then you need to uh, reboot. That's the end of her. And with this, if you have a, uh, if you've done it all properly, you'll get a, a proper Arch Linux install all the way through, and it should be perfect. Uh, let's go through it, and here it is here. So, as you can see, Grubs loaded our Arch Linux instance, and I'm going to log in as root, as proof, and here you are here. We have 
our arch main uh, virtual machine and the user root. So we have done a successful install of Arch Linux. I'm going to swap over to the voice transition. Okay. So thank you for joining me today. We've just gone through the Arch Linux installation process. And in the next video, we'll be going through configuration. So that means creating a user, installing a GUI, and also uh, much more. So stay tuned and look forward to the next video. Thanks for joining me again. Have a great one. I'll see you in the next video.